Hi everyone. This is another video in my series of unscripted game engine walkthroughs. Uh, this time around I'm going to take a look at Pico 8. Uh, I had been thinking about looking at RPG Maker, but I caught wind of a Pico 8 based game jam that's coming up, uh, hosted by someone in our local game development community. And so I thought I would sneak in a review of this one. So I've downloaded the Pico 8 engine slash editor and it was around 15 uh, US dollars. Um, I did get the bundle with something called Voxatron, which seems to be a 3D version of this uh, tool. So I might take a look at that later. Uh, that was about uh, 20 bucks. So when I boot up the EXE, uh, it gives me a little console here with a prompt. So it's suggesting that I type help, which I will do. And I get some options here for commands, loading and saving files. Uh, running your game, presumably, resuming, shutdown, reboot, uh, LS. So looks CD looks reminiscent of uh, Linux or DOS uh, command line. So I'm noticing that there's a like pink highlighted section here on Splore to explore cartridges. That seems notable to me. Um, and then I've got this blue uh, highlighted thing here for Graphics, Data, Audio, System, Math, Lua. Okay, so it looks like maybe they're using the Lua programming language. This is um, a language I'm loosely aware of. I haven't programmed in it, so we'll see how that goes. And then I can ask for help on certain topics. Um, I can press Escape to toggle the editor view, and Alt-Enter to toggle full screen, and uh, Fast Quit, and Adjust Volume. Okay, let's explore first. Your favorites list is empty. Okay, new featured. Let's try, oh, okay. So already I can get in and browse some games. Um, I don't know if these are bundled with this uh, EXC or if it's actually pulling data from online. Not sure. Uh, let's try to load one here. Okay, hit Z or V, press any button. Oops, not that button. Press any button, this button, the V button. Okay, so let's see. I could just play this game through the video and see if I can figure out how to fire real quick. There we go. Okay. Cool little, uh, little shooter here, bullet hell. Alright, um, let me try to get out of this. Escape, continue favorite, reset cart, or exit to explore. Let's exit to explore. And, um, let's, oh, okay. I get a prompt here. Interesting. Oop. Let's do, let's do an ls. All right, so I'm in the root directory. So there seems to be like some file management, a directory um, system. Let's see uh, if they have Linux-like things. Uh, no. Um, okay, I'm gonna try to escape to the toggle, to toggle the editor view. Um, although first, let me just make sure here. Run, load, save. Okay, so when I hit run, it runs, looks like the last thing that I had um, executed. So, all right. Okay, and then when I hit the editor view, it looks like I'm editing the, um, okay, and I can use the mouse. Um, it looks like I'm editing that shooter, maybe. Yeah, for each, okay. Let's get, uh, all right, in here I got a line count. Let's get out of here. So I'm going to do a, um, I could do a reboot or a resume or a shutdown. Let's try a reboot. There might be a, there, there might be a better way to clear the cartridge that I had, but we'll try this. 
Um, so now when I hit the editor, uh, when I hit the escape key, I have an empty editor. All right. And up top, I have some icons. I'm going to guess this is like the code view. Sprite editor here, it seems. Let's, uh, I do not want that color. Just going to add something for uh, testing. Okay. Does it keep the sprite? It does. Looks like I've got... Uh, Maybe some different sprites, toggle hex mode, sprite one, perhaps. Clipboard, select, pan, fill. Okay, some editing tools here. Let's see if we can, all right, I can place my, the sprite I just made on this tile map. Um, now, what are the dimensions here? Da, da, da. So is that eight by eight or something? Yep. <clears throat> um, okay. This looks like an inverse run key. It's sound. Okay, it's a speaker. Okay, so when I draw in this audio view, I might be drawing a waveform. Okay, so now the last icon up here is a, a pattern editor. Maybe for music. Uh, there are a couple other icons here. Uh, it looks like a um, column layout and then this sort of grid here. So you can manage some different uh, patterns. Patterns versus sound effects. Okay, so I have a sound effect here and a pattern here. I'm not sure how to play those yet, but let's figure that out. Okay, so if I hit escape again, that'll take me back to um, this console view. And uh, what if I save um, what I'm working on? Test one. So now what I'm going to try to do is explore again. Um, load one of these things. And um, check the editor. Oh, uh, check the editor through. Exit to explore. Um, okay. Okay, I got back there. All right. So now when I go to the editor after loading that cart, I've got a lot more stuff here. Got a lot of code, Age of Ants. I've got a lot of sprites. And I've got some tile maps here. Okay, and then down below, these little tabs uh, look like the tile sheets. So it's a little palette I can probably um, play around with. I'm wondering if this tile map has different layers. Um, it looks like there's, you know, there could be ground tiles and then potentially sprites on top of that. Let's look at this set of icons here. Okay, that just shows or hides these um, sprite sheets. Okay, so it looks like they have a little Hello World example in the manual here. So I'm gonna go through that uh, after Pico 8 boots, try typing some of these commands followed by enter. So it looks like it looks like you can type these right from the console. Um, so let's try that. Okay. Oop, I'm not in the console. There we go. Print. Hello. Okay. Uh, rect fill. 80, 80, 120, 112. Okay, so I drew a little rectangle there. I can draw circles and um, let's do for i equals one to four. D 
do print i and yeah, this is definitely giving me flashbacks to AppleSoft Basic. Um, I, I guess this is Lua I'm using here. So um, let's see what else. Uh, Pico 8 only displays uppercase characters. Just type normally without caps lock. You can build up an interactive program by using commands like this in the code editing mode along with two special callback functions, update and draw. Here, I'll move this over. For example, the following program allows you to move a circle around with the cursor keys. Press escape to switch to the code editor and type or copy paste the following code. Copy paste it is. Now press escape to return to the console and type run to see it in action. Okay, go to the code editor, paste that code. Mm. Mm. I pasted it, including the white space that was present in the document. That's gonna bug me. Uh, but not enough to fix it now. Okay, so let's, what did it say? Go back to the, um, go back here, type run, and I got a circle that I can move around with my uh, arrow keys. So let's take a look at that code and see how they did that. So in the update function, oh, I'm not going to be able to look at this. I've got to fix this. Okay, there we go. I removed some of the white space. All right, so it sets a couple of uh, variables. X and Y equals 64, possibly the starting position of that uh, circle. And then in the update function, if button zero is pressed or is held down, potentially, then uh, subtract one from the X position and uh, end. And then in the draw method, uh, CLS5. So CLS looks like a clear screen command. Um, not sure what uh, the argument five is. And then do a circle fill with X and Y. Okay, so that makes sense. Now, They've got these two um, special functions, which appear to be called um, repetitively. I'm not sure if there are constraints about what you can put in update or what you can put in draw. Like for instance, if I were to do this, like would that work? Syntax error. Uh, attempted to call a string value. Oh, okay. I think I was incorrect about the syntax of Lua. Perhaps um, the end is like an end if. Yeah, okay, so interesting. So I can still perform um, keyboard control here and it will move around this circle. Uh, but yet, I put it all in one method. So that's, that's a question I have. What, what is the real um, distinction between those two methods and are there any constraints there? And also I have a question about the CLS. I wonder if I can get help on it. Clear the screen and reset the clipping rectangle. Call uh, defaults to black. Okay, so the color. Um, right, because when I ran it, it cleared it to gray. So that number uh, must indicate a color. Let's try six. Yeah, so different shade of gray. Okay, well, I don't know if that's um, like an overall RGB value or just an index into some palette. Uh, not sure. Let's try something. Let's try 100. 
Okay, so I have to check out um, the data type of that argument. Well, well, that was pretty quick and easy. I'm sure there's a lot more to do in this engine, um, but that uh, got us going pretty quickly. I did have one other uh, question about this, which is, can you bundle the game that you're programming in this engine into like an executable or uh, mobile app or something where you take that VM and your cartridge and, and, and bundle it up? So I'll have to look online and see if that's possible. I'm also curious where that uh, physical file is being stored. So if I do a listing in my root directory, I've got this test1.p8 file. And so I'm curious on how to sort of get at that. Like let's say I wanted to put it into source control um, and update it periodically and track those changes. How would I do that? Okay, so I checked into it and it looks like the cartridges are stored in your app data folder. So I'm gonna save what I have here, save it in a new file name. And then I'm gonna go to my um, app data. Okay, so here's my app data roaming Pico 8 carts directory. And this has the two files that I had saved. If I go ahead and try to edit one of those, I can see here that there is some human readable stuff. The code is uh, pretty discernible. And then there are sections for graphics and map, um, which uh, you know are numerically based. But it does seem like I could put this into a source control system and track it and update it over time. Well, that's a super quick look at Pico 8. Um, and I'll put a link to the game jam I mentioned earlier in the video. Uh, if you're watching this um, video in October of 2023, then you could participate in that game jam, which is coming up. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks and have a great day.